Hey there everyone, my name's Adam Repos Vox, and at the Build Developers Conference, Microsoft announced that in an upcoming anniversary update for Windows 10, they're adding a lot of new features and capabilities, many of which I am quite excited about. So this video is going to cover my top five of the new features that are coming to Windows 10, along with a couple other mentions. And once they are actually implemented into Windows 10, I'll probably do, be doing a few different tutorials related to those features. Let's jump in with number five. Number five. Number five is that we may see the return of Clippy, the paperclip assistant from the older Microsoft Word and Microsoft Office days. Microsoft has stated many times over the past month or so that they see the future of computers as being very bot oriented. AI bots helping and responding to everyone. Now, this hasn't quite gone so well given that their AI Twitter bot Tay quickly turned into a racist and Hitler-esque bot and they had to shut it down, but they, they do see the future of interaction like such as with Cortana and things like that being how the software goes. So we may see the return of more of those helpful things, hopefully a bit more helpful than Clippy was. Basically Microsoft thinks that all of their software will have bots either associated with them or a universal bot structure, again such as with Cortana, that will interact with all of their apps and communicate data to their cloud service via their Azure cloud platform. So it will be interesting to see where this goes. Number 4 Number 4 is that Xbox equals Windows 10 or will very shortly. Uh, Microsoft has been making many changes ever since launch to the Xbox One to make it look more and more like Windows 10 in terms of the user interface and feature sets, but they're going to continue to do such and using the universal Windows platform, they're making it to where Xbox and PC apps and games via the Windows Store will work on both. So many of the apps that you download on your Windows 10 computer via the store would also work on your Xbox which is kind of cool, and they've been moving some of the games over, such as Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and they've actually now released Killer Instinct, which is their fighting game that was an Xbox One exclusive, is now available for free in the Windows 10 store. Now it does say with in-app purchase, with in-app purchases, so you're likely going to have to pay for characters or skins or something like that, but it is free. Now this is a 30 gigabyte download and I've already posted a video or should have. Either way, it'll be up. So I will link the unlisted video link in the description below on how you can change the default app install location because 30 gigabytes is a big thing to swallow. You might need to tell it to install somewhere other than wherever default C drive installation place the store decides to put it. And Microsoft has also announced that they're trying to make the Windows 10 store compete with Steam via mod support. Uh, various graphical API support, you know, trying to up the store game because there's been a lot of complaints that the games via the Windows Store run like crap and don't support any of the proper things that PC games should support. They're just very cut and dry console ports. And so Microsoft is saying that they want, you know, Windows Store to compete with other gaming stores, despite the fact that only back in August of 2015 did they say that the Windows Store was not a competitor to Steam whatsoever. Lastly, related to Xbox One, is that everyone will be able to use the, their Xbox One as a developer kit. You can go ahead and download the beta, but they're saying the beta is very experimental, very unstable, and the full release that's coming soon will be a lot more stable, but they have announced that basically everyone will be able to have developer kit access for the Xbox One. You will still have to pay to publish your apps, but they want anyone to be, to be, to be able to develop for the Xbox One. And that's pretty cool. Number three. Number three is that they're extending your ability to log in with your face. Their functionality, they're improving it and they're extending it to be able to work with websites. So as a sort of not two factor authentication, but you know, a sort of biometric login for websites. Unfortunately, this only works with Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer. Cool feature, but we're not gonna get the third party support that we actually want. Number two. Number two, sticky notes are actually getting handwriting supports for the Surface tablets and all of the other Windows tablets that are out there these days that you can write on. You can actually start writing in the Windows 10 sticky notes and then it'll it, it, they're improving the handwriting recognition engine so it can automatically transcode that into typed out text. As well as Cortana will be able to scan your sticky notes and pick up dates and to make reminders and calendar entries for you from that. To me that's a little creepy but it could be helpful nonetheless. I use Google Keep instead of sticky notes as that syncs across both my computers and my phone and all that jazz but 
still pretty cool nonetheless. Number one. And number one, they are making Bash native to Windows. Users will literally just be able to type in Bash on the start menu and get a Linux subsystem command prompt right there within Windows 10. So, and there's a lot that's going to be based on Ubuntu. And so you're literally, as far as everyone's been able to tell, you're going to be able to run or at least compile and then run Windows or Ubuntu apps within Windows, run Linux systems within Windows. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> it's it may, maybe not be that big of a deal, but since it will support everything, you know, it will support APT and things like that. So you will be able to run apps within Windows without using emulation and without using SIGWIN, which is nowhere near as elegant of a solution as actually running it natively within Windows 10. So it will be really exciting once, you know, about two months or so after this comes out to see what people do with it. I am, I am extremely excited to see what this means for Linux within Windows development. Uh, uh, I don't know. It should be pretty cool. There are a few other runner-up features, features, features that I wanted to mention, such as Cortana and Skype are getting improvements supposedly, which I hope so because Skype has been a horrific, horrific mess the past six months or so. I can't on desktop. I can't see group chats at all. Sometimes messages don't send, and it seems to tell everyone else that I'm either online or away when I'm constantly in do not disturb or invisible mode. So that really frustrates me. And we're finally getting native apps for Facebook related things. Facebook, Facebook Messenger, and Instagram are finally all coming to Windows 10. No word whether or not we'll actually be able to upload images from the Windows 10 app. I would hope so. That would kind of need to be the point, but that's really good because we haven't actually gotten that support within the Windows Store, despite, you know, Windows 8 launching in 2012. And then they're improving pin input and things like that. So that's been my top five features that they're adding in or updating in Windows 10 coming very soon. Should be based around this anniversary update of sorts for the Windows anniversary. I'm super excited, looking forward to it. If you like this video, smash that like button. Leave me a comment down below with if you have a favorite feature from this list. What is it? Let me know down there. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe for more awesome tech videos and I'll see you in the next one. My name's been Adam Reeples Vox. Good stuff's coming. I'm, I, I can't wait for that Windows subs or that Linux subsystem. I, the lack of need for virtualization would be pretty, pretty cool.